Mo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, uh, a couple videos ago, um, I brought out the old mill and getting ready to get that thing going and, and learning how to operate it and getting things cleaned up and asked you guys for some questions out there, or I had, or I had some questions, uh, and I got an overwhelming response from uh, a lot of you viewers out there on websites to go to to look for parts and stuff I needed for that mill. Uh, YouTube channels to check out for machinists that that might uh, show me how to operate older style equipment like this and that was awesome I've checked out uh, those websites and checked out those YouTube channels and thank you so much for all your support there uh, one of the things that uh, that I wanted to to get started with is actually uh, drilling and getting a chuck set up in in the mill so I could actually do some Drilling and I had if you remember I had this brand new chuck with this uh, with this three-quarter shank on it That I, I may have ordered through my drill press and, and realized it was the wrong thing and just set it aside And, and never returned it and have, I've just had it. It's brand new and and I realized that the, the mill has these different collets if you will different size one of them is three-quarters This thing fits right in there, and I thought I'd solved the problem for sure uh, but when I went to, to set it in, I realized that the shank is, is really short and it doesn't quite get to the set screw right here. So I figured this is no problem. I'll just drill another one, tap it, and, and lower it down, and that'll work really good. And it did fit right in there. The set screw tightened up, and Abba's off and running, and I thought this would be cool. However, the difference is that the shaft on this right here is three or four thousand smaller than the actual hole that's in the collet right here. So you can see, maybe you can't see, but there's a lot of wiggle room back and forth right here. So when this set screw got tight, it just pushed the, the chuck over to one side. And when I stepped the collet in there and turned the machine on, I got a lot of wobbling. This is wobbling like this and I couldn't, you know, that's, that's no good. We want everything running nice and true. So a couple of you guys out there suggested that Jimbo, you've got the resources right here in front of you. I got a lathe, I got a mill, so why not make one of these things that fit? And I thought that was a great idea. So I take this little part out of the chuck right here. I took a look at it. And basically what it is, it's a piece of one inch bar stock. That's the size of the diameter of the shoulder right here. This piece that threads into the chuck is half inch and the thread is 20. This is, uh, this is quite a bit under three quarters. We need to make a new shaft that's going to be about two inches long that's going to run up to or close to the very end of this. This is approximately two inches. And we've got to make it right at three quarters of an inch. So that thing fits nice and tight in here. And then we'll be able to utilize the center uh, pin right here for tightening this up. And hopefully when that's all done, everything will be nice and snug and we can get this, <clears throat> excuse me, chuck to operate uh, nice and true. So that's the plan for today. We're gonna make ourselves a part that'll hopefully work for the drill, for, hopefully it'll work for my chuck on the mill. All right, hey, before we get started though, I've got a couple of new additions to the shop and I'm gonna show you what those are. And as soon as we get over that, we'll get started on the part. Let's do it. Okay, so first up, is this little rolling toolbox cart. Uh, I figured it would be perfect to have all the tools I have for the mill, the lathe, and even some stuff for the wood lathe, all in the same area that uh, this piece of equipment are at. I've had this stuff, the tooling, all over my shop in various areas, and it, eh, hard to find. The best place for it is right here in the area where you're gonna be working with it. So I was looking for the ideal perfect toolbox or cart for this area and I found it at Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight uh, had the perfect size, for me anyway, what I was looking for. Uh, for $149, I thought it was a great buy. This is uh, four drawers right here and storage underneath with some giant casters and nice area to put uh, your tooling in and keep everything um, out of the way and organized, which is really cool. Also, it has this, uh, offers this, this lid that comes down and could double as a work surface as well. If you're doing something here, you can put something down here and, and mill and you can use this as a table to work off of. I thought that was pretty cool too. So all in all, this is a perfect little addition uh, for this area over here. 
Okay, well here it is. I got myself an anvil. Now I've been uh, I've been looking for one of these for a long time, and um, as you guys may or may not know, these things are pretty expensive used, anywhere from $100 to $500, and that's if you can find them. They're pretty hard to find. Um, now I got this one at the Harbor Freight, and I was down there um, getting the toolbox for the for the lathe and mill over there, and stumbled across this thing and couldn't resist it. It was $64. And granted, it's probably not the quality as a real good anvil would be, but for what I'm going to be using it for, which is not really that much, um, I think it'll work out just fine. And for now, uh, storing it, I'm just going to keep it right over here, uh, out of the way, and if I need to move it uh, anywhere to the welding table, I can do that. Um, but anyways, I thought this was a pretty good buy, and not to mention, this is Jimbo's Garage Blue. Pretty cool. I like it. So we're just going to store this thing out of the way over here. This, this right here um, is nothing new. This is just a, a six pound sledgehammer head. One of my guys had brought this in for me and asked me if I could put a new handle on it for him. Uh, so I did. Um, it's a six pound sledgehammer. Now you guys are probably asking why is the handle so short? Well, we are concrete contractors and this is what we use to drive metal and wood stakes into the ground. Uh, Six pound, maybe eight pound, depending on how big the guys are. For me, six pound is plenty, plenty, heavy, plenty heavy enough to drive the stakes to the ground, but that's the reason why the handles are short. And so that's just something I recently did for one of my guys in the shop. Not new, but just something I had to do. So there you go. The toolbox, the anvil, a couple of good additions to the shop. Now let's get started on that part. All right, so I've, I started with a piece of uh, one inch, and now they call this hot rolled steel at the metal supply store. You know, cold rolled, hot rolled, I'm not really certain of the, the difference there. Maybe uh, the cold rolled has, has mill scale, but anyways, uh, this is what I got. And uh, I started with a uh, center hole there, and you know, I don't want you guys to go crazy in the comment section. Hey, I'm, I'm really new to machining right here, and this is all new to me, and I'm just learning as I go right here, and I'm just trying to figure out how things work. So I started by, by milling down the threaded area, or I should say cutting down the threaded area of, of the, the stock right here. I wanted to get that part of it done first, and then I'd move to the other side. Now I'm cutting it down to, to about a half inch and I'm, I'm cutting it a little long here. I, I, I just, I'm going to have plenty of thread. Ultimately, I'll be cutting some of that off. But once I got it down to the, uh, the right diameter right there, I pulled it out and actually changed the bit, the tooling here from a, a left to a right or a right to a left. I don't know what it's actually called. Now I'm going the other way to create the, uh, the two inch shaft, the three quarter inch part. So I want to be careful and when I get right down here, I got to leave that shoulder on there. You can see that I, I started uh, cutting it down and you can see I'm leaving that one inch shoulder uh, that replicated the uh, other uh, shank that we're trying to copy here. And I'm just moving along here and, and I got to say, I was getting a little nervous. I, I, I cannot, this has to be absolutely perfect. I've got some time invested in making this tool right here. Uh, and I needed to be sure that it was absolutely perfect. I, I, I had to have a, a perfectly tight fit. So I took my time and I had every piece of measuring device I could think of out there. So this is when I had to call my father-in-law in. And he had brought out a micrometer uh, that uh, was a one to two inch micrometer. And we were getting this thing narrowed down to right to the thousandths of an inch. And which is what we need to do. And, you know, he was showing me how to operate things and how to read things. It's just, it's, it's really good for me. Um, I'm glad I have him around to, to uh, teach me these things. So we ultimately, after farting around, got it done. And uh, there it is. And, and as far as I can tell, it's right where it needs to be. So here you see me with the, ta uh, with the die right here. And I'm, uh, it was a little hard getting started. But once I got it started, I just went ahead and, and uh, you know, ran those threads in there. And that worked out pretty good. Everything is nice and clean. And as soon as I got that done... I tried it out, that chuck fit on there perfectly. So right here, um, I've got a, uh, a parting tool. This is, I believe is what it's called, and that's used for cutting, cutting things off or, or parting things off. 
and you can see that I've measured the length that I need and I'm go ahead and I'm starting to part this off moving it over to the other side and I just want to be just under two inches on this and I'm starting to do the same thing over here as, as well now I'm not going to run this all the way through I'm just going to run it to about uh, two-thirds of the way through I just get, got a little nervous and then the rest of the way I'm just going to use a hacksaw to uh, to cut the balance off and you know what I just I just didn't want to have any mistakes at this point. I got some time invested in this, and so we're moving along. I just wanted to trim off the end and put a little bevel right here on the edge uh, to clean things up, and that worked out pretty good. And here I cut off the other side and uh, keyed it up in the chuck and just cleaned off the, the back side there. So there it is. Uh, that actually worked out pretty good, uh, and that fit absolutely perfect in there. I'm pretty pleased with it. Okay, so we finished up on the lathe and uh, making the part that uh, I set out to do. What we're trying to do is replicate this part right here. That is the factory part that fit inside the chuck. As you guys uh, remember this thing, the reason for making this is uh, this part screws into the chuck. This goes into here. I've got a lot of play right here, so when we tighten up the set screw, uh, it pushed the chuck to one side, causing it to run out of true. So the plan was to make a new part that's similar to this that fits nice and tight in here and hopefully when we tighten the set screw up and put the chuck in here hopefully that thing will run nice and true that's the game plan hey if it works that's awesome if it doesn't work it sure was a lot of fun on the lathe creating this uh, this part now one thing I want to show you there's a couple of changes that I made on this that, that are a little bit different from the original is one is the threads are a little bit longer and the reason why I made them longer is because I can. I have room inside the chuck to utilize as much as I can, and so I did. I, these threads are really short. I extended the threads. I had plenty of room inside the chuck. Still fits nice and tight up against the shoulder right here. And then the obvious part is uh, extending the shank. This is uh, what we really need to do is get this thing long enough so when it fits inside here. By the way, check this out. Look at that fit right there. There is, this thing fits absolutely perfect in there. There is zero play, nice and tight, tighter than a first time whore. And this is exactly what I set out to do, is to get this thing that has no play in it whatsoever. Hopefully that's gonna solve a problem. But anyways, I'm getting ready to, uh, to mill out this little groove right here in the side that's the same as this. To, for the set screw to, to set against nice and flat. I know it's not a big milling project, but nevertheless, it's something on the mill. This is what this video is about, making a part and actually uh, using the mill for the very first time. Now, I did get a little bit of instruction from my father-in-law um, as to what type of tool to use for this. I mean, he's got thousands of different tools and we could probably use anything, but I explained to him what I'm doing. He pulled out this particular tool and said, this is the one you want to probably try and use and then explain to me about propping things up in here and getting things uh, braced in here, uh, especially for this round uh, part that's not gonna go anywhere. So I did get a little bit of instruction from him, so I'm not going in completely blind, but nevertheless, I'm anxious to give it a try. So with that said, let's get started. So I went over to the toolbox and uh, grabbed the collet and opened up the drawer and grabbed the suggested bit or tool that he, that he uh, suggested and, and it was a half inch and it was like a four flute. I guess the flutes are the cutting edges of the tool. But uh, anyways, got that uh, all clamped in there and uh, getting ready to put the uh, part in the vise. And I opened up this drawer and this is, this is where he's got a lot of these shims. And uh, he, he calls them parallels, and maybe that's what they're called, but there's all kinds of different shapes and sizes for, for you know, making things and adjusting things in the vise to, to, for your particular part you're cutting. And this is what I did. I just grabbed these and stacked it in there. That seemed to work pretty good. And you can see me measuring out exactly where I need to put this, uh, you know, the cut in the uh, this flat spot in the, in the round stock right there. And once I got everything adjusted where I wanted to, and here we go. This is the first go at uh, my first uh, mill job right here. Now, I don't, you know, like I said, I'm not really certain how things are supposed to go or how fast you're supposed to go or slow or whatever. So I just took my time and uh, cut through there nice and smooth and kind of slow. I have to say it is kind of slow, but, you know, I, I don't know how things are supposed to go. So um, it all worked out really good. Uh, you can see it's cutting really nice, and uh, it didn't take me hardly any time at all. This is real speed right here, so you can 
you can you can see how it just took uh, how, how it cut that really smooth. Now this thing is about this this bit's half inch and I this thing's about seven eight the this, the cut's about seven eighths of an inch long. So this is the second pass and this is the final pass. I just had two passes in there and went through there and cut it up really nice and there it is and that turned out pretty much perfect just the way I wanted it and I like the way it fit right in there. There we go. Okay, so there we go. Our part is successfully uh, in the collet and tightened down. And so now the moment of truth is here to see if the fruits of our labor has paid off and if this is actually gonna work or if it doesn't gonna work. At, you know what, if it does, I think it's awesome. If it doesn't, I'm totally satisfied anyway. It was a lot of fun uh, working on the mill or, or I should say working on the lathe and making this part. That's something I don't do all the time, and I'm very, very pleased with the way it did come out. And then, of course, we didn't do a lot of milling, but, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to doing some milling projects uh, in the future. But, uh, anyways, let's see if this thing's going to work. Let's do it. Well, so far, so good. Everything is in. Let's see how she works. Well, I gotta say, that is pretty close to being perfect. It may not be perfect, but real close. Probably just as accurate as my actual drill press. There you go. Wow. I'm really pleased with the way that turned out. Um, I'll be able to do some drilling with this uh, with this mill now, as long as it and some mill work, and uh, with the part that I made to make it happen. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. It sure was a lot of fun for me to make. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more of the video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.